your seatbelt is going to be a bumpy walk. Chrissy is hilarious. Chrissy, have you ever heard of the comedian Basha K. Ali? No, that sounds like something you yell at before you blow up a plane. <laughs> <laughs> Thirty seconds remaining. Like, what would you say? I doubt it will stand up to something. I haven't been disrespectful to you at all. I was very confused by the title "Everything Everywhere All at Once" because that's also what we call it when the ass takes off his shirt. <laughs> 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 I shouldn't be up here. I should be in school on the other side of the ocean. Hello, hello. Good evening. Welcome to another episode of the Chrissy Mayer podcast. You can tell by the sign behind me what this is. Uh, you can listen to this podcast on iTunes, YouTube, Spotify, SoundCloud, Twitch, Twitter, Rumble, Rockfin. We're all over the place. Now, before I bring in our fabulous and gorgeous guest, I have a comedy show to promote. Yes, yes, I do. Guys, you have one more chance to see me very pregnant doing a headlining set. And that is in just a few weeks from now. I will be in New Jersey. Yes, we love New Jersey. Uh, headlining Morris Plains. Saturday, February 24th, I'll be at TIFF's Grill and Ale House, also known as the Dojo of Comedy. 8.30 show. Come on out. It's a Saturday. You have no excuse not to be there if you're in the New Jersey area. Love to see you at this show. My wonderful, hilarious friend Keanu Thompson will be featuring. And Andrew Harms, who is uh, the announcer on my compound media show, Wet Spot, will also be there doing a set. So get your tickets while you can, because this will be, this is it, guys. After this, you're going to be like, oh, man, I wish I could have seen you breathing heavily into a microphone, getting winded after five minutes of jokes, being seven, eight months pregnant. You know, This is your chance. This is the one shot you have, guys. So don't sleep on it. All right. All right. Okay. Um, so excited to have this gal on the show tonight. She has quite a story. You may have seen her on the whatever podcast you may have been following her for years i already see some super fans in the chat that are saying i've been following this girl <laughs> since she was 17 uh so welcome to the show violet brandani yay Hello. I, lo I love the lights oh uh, thank you so much it's my stream room debut never even streamed in here before <laughs> really this is yeah. a new room yes Yes, just put it all together. So, ooh, I hope um I hope no one's prone to seizures. No, those are great lights in the background. I think they're fun. I know. I was like, like, maybe I should turn them off. <laughs> it's like a little fun house. It's very cute. Um, uh, let's see, let's see. Do you happen to have a microphone, Violet, nearby? I do, but I can't get it to work. So, wait, can you hear oh, me? Oh no! Yes, I just didn't know if you had the the right setting going on oh, your okay. microphone i'll just okay. try to talk really loud <laughs> can you can you connect your sure mic? is it connected because that's a I good microphone because before i was like trying to get it to work and it wasn't working so i was like i'll just use the camera oh, on my camera, the mic on my camera okay okay let me cool. see what maybe give it another whirl we'll, get, we'll give her a minute <laughs> that I know the feeling though. Like I have the same microphone. It's like you have this like this yeah. expensive, really good microphone. You're like, I just can't get the damn thing. I know. I that. really like need a tech techie by my side. Come on, guys. <laughs> I know. Uh it, <laughs> It's like, look, I can't be cute and funny and know about technological stuff. Okay. We we can't do it all, guys. It's That's all too not much. It's all too much. Um, yes, and you can see Violet's handles are scrolling down below. You can follow her on Instagram, TikTok, and OnlyFans at Violet Brandani and on Twitter at Lil Violet, which I imagine would be your your rap name 
if you started rapping. Yeah. Little Violet. <laughs> <laughs> it's I love it. Something. Okay. Amazing. I'm Violet. To mess with this, so I'm just going to yell. Okay. Yeah. We love yelling here. Um, okay. I'm going to start with the boring question that you, that you get all the time, but just for people that are not familiar with you or don't already follow you, how did you um, get into the industry? How did you become a content creator? Walk us through your, your origin story. I became a content creator when I was 18. Um, I kind of just left my hometown one day after a spontaneous New York trip with my friends. And I was like, this is really fun for me. I really love just being on the road, exploring, <laughs> you know, uh, I liked it a lot more than my group of friends did. So instead of going to college, like I should have been that semester, I decided to just drive to Phoenix. Um, and I was like, you know, it wasn't all that glamorous at first. I just, I just did it. But before that, I was kind of partying a lot in my hometown. And um, like one day while I was in Phoenix, I remembered my ex-boyfriend and I were like having fun. We were like recording our, our sex and stuff like that. He was taking pictures of me and he posted like a little behind nudie of me on reddit and we without were like, telling you or asking no no we just like made this little okay. reddit account called legit mister and he posted it and it like kind of blew up and i was like oh that's cool you know <laughs> we were just kind of having fun um and then when i was in phoenix i was like oh yeah um that was fun so i went to the legit mister page and i saw all these comments like you should make a snapchat you should do so i made a snapchat and i linked it to the reddit page immediately like a lot of people started following me and uh this one guy was like i want to sex with you so bad and i'll give you 40 dollars." and i was like i don't really know how to do that but let's do Next it thing for 40 dollars yeah. Yeah, I was wow. like, heck yeah, 40 bucks, <laughs> yes. Yeah, 40 so, bucks is 40 um, bucks. And it took him like three minutes, like three texts later, he was like, I came. I was like, oh, cool. That's it? Three texts? Yeah. Wow. It was awesome. <laughs> so then I took my 40 bucks, I drove to Vegas, and after that I was like on the road for seven months. And by the time I was back in New York City, seven months later, that's when Aaron hit me up or nudies <laughs> he's the ceo of nudies and he was like you want to work together and I, I thought it was like a catfish or something because the girl right. how, the did he, how did he find out about you um i had an instagram account and i was kind of like posting there like to promote my snapchat and so i guess he just found me on there he dm'd me and I was like, sure, like, let's do it. Um, but at first I was very skeptical about it because all of the girls were very bootylicious. Very, you know, very like curvaceous, like fuller figured. Yes, I was like, there's no way. Like these girls are way too good to be true. I'm not gonna be able to own up to this status. I don't even think you're real. And when I talked to him on the phone, I was like, oh, can I talk to, you know, one of the girls and he was like, well, they're all at a photo shoot right now. And I was like, yeah, right. Like you're, <laughs> you're all lying to me. Yeah. Yeah. And then like an hour later, Viking Barbie called me and she was like giving me advice and stuff like that. But I was like, oh my gosh, this is real. So who was Viking I, Barbie? Um, she is the company's like head girl. She's the wife or not wife, the girlfriend of the ceo so okay. they've been like a little team and everything um but after that i decided to just like pack up get an apartment back in phoenix i just i wanted to be close to la but phoenix is cheaper so i packed up my things started taking this seriously i was like oh i have like a real opportunity here to make some money and have fun while doing it you know i just started it as like I like record, I'm very comfortable being naked. I like recording myself. I like 
the fact that no one's telling me what to do, I can explore. And so I kind of was like, I'm documenting my sexuality, exploring my sexuality and the world. So, yeah. <laughs> I just looked up, I just put, uh, I looked at nudies.tv because I was like, I, I like didn't fully know what it was. It, they offer subscriptions to, to Snapchats. Um, so yeah. if you become a member, uh, members enjoy boyfriend like privileges from private Snapchat accounts, select a girl from our model page and the duration of subscription you want to sign up for it. We will add you in as soon as an hour it says, how often will I get snaps? Nudies girls snap up to five new shows a week on, on and off days. They will repost highly requested shows. Um, oh, this is interesting. So why would someone sign up for this instead of just being on snapchat i believe that site is very outdated like um i don't even think nudies uses that site very much anymore but that's how we all started off that's how i started off was on snapchat the good old days <laughs> you know you just kind of like uploaded your stuff to snapchat and then you could sex with the guys on the side and send them like a message during the day but um, we didn't get into OnlyFans until 2020 because I asked whenever I first started, I asked him if I could start an OnlyFans and he was like, I remember him texting me back. Are you effing retarded? That's what he said to me. And I was like, really? Oh, Why would you want to start an Only? Yeah. It seems like that would be the next. I think he thought it as like a major competition at first and not okay. like an asset. If we would have started like whenever I asked to start, it would have been a lot better, but yeah. <laughs> okay. So you're with the nudie.tv people. Um, they're kind of, it's, they're probably helping you, you know, schedule collabs with other girls, right? It's probably good for networking. You're like part of a group, right? And then d how did, did they become your, your management in a way? Like when did they start to I guess like have more control over your image or have more of a say, right? Was it right yeah, away? So technically they managed me right from when they hit me up when I was in New York, I was 18 years old and they were like, get rid of all of your accounts. We're going to put you on new accounts. Um, and you're going to sign a contract. And like, I kind of just did my own thing for a long time until like, 2020 things kind of started getting weird like and you started what was it 2017 you said yes or, um, uh, okay. 2018 well okay. the end of 2017 so 2018 kind of um but yeah things just started getting very controlling like this time last year i remember him being like we're about to have a what's it called like another collab and this one's mandatory so you have to be there and i was like They've never been mandatory before. You're just saying that because you know that I try to skip out on all. Explain and, like what a, what a, what this type of collab is for for people who don't know. So basically, they get a house and uh, all of the nudies girls. There's about ten girls. All of them show up and we all like do co like shows the whole time, you know. And like, is more camming or you're doing like boy girl or girl girl. It's like girl, girl shows the whole time. Okay. And I hate that kind of stuff being like forced on me. Like I always record things when I'm horny or whenever I feel like it. I, that's why I got into this industry because I can do things when I feel like it. And I didn't do mainstream because I'm not trying to be booked and told to be here. Right. When I want to work here. with who you want to work with and when you yeah. feel like it. And when I feel like it. Right. Um, but everything was just so forced. Like as soon as we got into the house, it was like very, um, it was misaligned with what I was doing on my own time because it's like, oh, you need to be doing this girl, girl scene here and then hop into the next room and do this girl, girl scene. It was just so forced. And my like fans know sometimes I'll have videos out like every single day in a month. And then sometimes it'll be a month where I just have like one video out because I like it to be spontaneous. Everyone understands that I'm taking them along on a journey and it's not like I'm being booked for scenes. Right. 
And so, so just like a big sort of content house. And like, there may have been girls in the house that you liked and wanted to work with, but you just didn't like being told when and where and how to create your yeah, stuff. It's yeah. almost like it takes away kind of some of the creativity for you. Yeah, exactly. And then there were a lot of girls in Phoenix that always wanted to collab with me and hang out and stuff. And every time I would hang out with them and we would talk about collabing, I would get a text from my manager immediately. Like, don't tag her in anything. She doesn't even like you. She messaged me before saying she doesn't like, you know, just like isolating me in so many ways. That's manipulative. Like, to, like first of all, you, you don't know. have to like someone to work with them. That's Yeah, irrelevant. exactly. And, and like, Last year at AVN, whenever I went, um, I go every year because it's a great opportunity to network with other girls and see the other side of the industry. Uh, and I really admire everyone there, you know. Um, but he called me. They let me present an award last year, too, which was really cool. I was so nervous about it. But I said, like, what one line. It? Um, it was the blow Best Blowjob Scene Award, which is great. Like, I loved it. Um and he called me and was like, why'd you go to that? Like, none of the girls want you there. They don't even like you. And I was like, again, oh, with the people not liking you. I don't know. I just feel like that's, that's an immature thing to say. Yeah. It's very weird. Um, and if I wanted to do like, say this podcast, he would, he probably would have said no. You know, um, I was only allowed to do podcasts that he wanted me to do when he wanted me to do them. Um, like right before I quit, I remember one of the girls had been on a podcast and she was talking about, oh, you're going to love this. <laughs> she was talking about how if you have a threesome with a pregnant lady, or we know if you have sex with a pregnant lady, you're basically having a threesome. It is. And there was a clip of that. <laughs> I know, gross. There was a clip on that on Instagram and she was like asking us all to repost it. And I was like, I'm not going to repost that. Um, and yeah, she was just kind of forcing that on me to repost it. And she's a bigger girl in the group. So uh, three days later, I, I don't like, like yeah, I don't like the idea. Cause you do see that a lot. Cause I, I do follow like quite a few girls from the industry on my Twitter. And sometimes you will have days where you you're scrolling through and you're like, Oh wow. It's just like a ton of porn. Oh, it's because it's like, everyone's retweeting each other. And I, and I get that like a lot of people want to support, like I retweet a lot of my other like comedian friends and you want to support your, but like, I, it's so icky the idea that you are, have to be forced or uh, kind of pressured to retweet somebody's stuff that you maybe. Yeah. That you don't, don't even agree of. with. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. This is so interesting. This is from my husband, Frank. We reached out to nudies maybe two years ago to get you on and it was a hard, no, we are not interested. I did not know this. Ah. I didn't know that either. Most of the time, I mean, probably 100% of the time, if an opportunity was uh, given to me or offered to me through email, Aaron probably, I keep mentioning his name. I'm so sorry. It's all right. Um, I don't know if I can get to for that. Or, I don't know. It's fine. I mean, like. But um, they would just basically not show me, you know, and say their own thing. Or sometimes he or someone else would log into my accounts and start messaging people crazy things or commenting crazy mean things that just totally went against my character and wow i couldn't really do anything about it i felt like that's horrible yeah you're not even in charge of your own your own brand your own personality uh yeah. that's so at what point did you realize like okay, this is, this is getting to a breaking point. Like what were some of the other signs that you were like, I, I can't stay with this, that these people. Um, I feel like I, I realized it a while ago and it made me not be able to work to my fullest potential. I was just like, okay, let's just ride this out. And you know, if you keep working hard, um, maybe it'll get better. And Maybe if you kind of just distance yourself from them, it'll get better. But um, I think that it was a lack of confidence that I could even restart, you know, because I've already dedicated so much time to like my best. I mean, I feel like your best years are probably like when you're younger, like 18, 
you're cute, you're young, you're fresh. And so I was very nervous about restarting and I was nervous about the power that they had whenever I left because I know horror stories from girls in the past who did leave the industry or left the management company and he would just attack them left and right. Like they weren't able to keep an account because he would spend crazy money to like report them and keep them down. Um, and yeah, that was just a fear of mine. So, and you're still so young. Oh my God. Like don't, uh, don't think that at all. And a lot of people like, God, most of us waste many years uh, of our, of our twenties. So thank don't, you. <laughs> don't worry. Don't worry about that at all. Um, cause you, you had, you used to go by the name, um, Violet Summers. Do they kind of just own that, that name basically at this point? Yeah. Well, they technically made the name, um, I remember they gave me like a list of options because before I was Courtney Cash, okay. I kind of went by that name. I thought it was cute, <laughs> but I was that for like six months. And then they gave me a list of options and I thought Violet Summers was so cute. Um, and yeah, they, I don't know if they own it. I, my lawyer said that all of the contracts are like BS and you can't really own a name because there are other girls who, you know, like mainstream porn stars, like Emily Willis, um, bless her heart, by the way. Um, oh, who, how is she doing? Does anybody know? Uh, I don't it, know. I don't know. Think it sounds um, good. Yeah, it doesn't she's look been good. on my mind all day, though. That's why that name yeah. popped up in my head first thing. I hope she's doing okay. I've been praying for her. Yeah. Um, but they get to go and do scenes with browsers or whatever and then move on keep their name like it's not like browsers yeah. owns their name so it's kind of bs that he would even threaten me like that but i just wanted to like not yeah have you any just to bounce because i think you had what do you had like 10 at the most you had what was it like 10 million instagram followers i had 13 million i had 13.6 oh i think it was and um, they gave it to another girl on the team. They just gave your Instagram to yeah. another girl? Yeah. And I was, like, shocked that she would even take it. Like, I was like, really? Like, you're going to just oh take it? Oh, my God. I yeah. don't know. So would they just delete your photos? Or they kept your photos on there and just switched it over to this other girl? No, they, like, slowly deleted it. And I think now they're all gone. Um Wow. Yeah. That is insane. I've never heard of anybody doing that. But I know. Probably, it's kind of that's very icky. It's like, no, those people were following you. Uh, you should have been entitled to bring those followers with you, whether you change your name or not. Yeah. Um, and like, I earned those followers. Like, yeah. I, you know, I gained them. They were following me. They liked following me. And I would feel dumb taking someone else's account and then just posting it on it like it was mine. I would feel very dumb to do that. <laughs> yeah, I'd be like, ugh, I would feel icky about myself. I'd be like, well, I, I definitely didn't earn this. And, uh, you know, probably most people, if, if, if it's like another... I, I don't know if some people would be like, oh, hey, I thought I was, uh, I thought I was following, following Violet. Like, what? But maybe people don't realize, like, maybe enough people just didn't really notice, but that's still. Um, so when did you start noticing that the management company was starting to get more controlling you? So it sounds like, yeah, they're already saying, you know, in charge of what podcasts you can or can't do. Um, would they make it so that you could only collaborate with certain people? Like how much could you run ideas by them at all? Um, I would say, okay. So in 2020, I went to AVN with Penthouse and um, when Penthouse wanted to put me on the cover of their magazine and everything, air, like nudies got very weird about it and they, they just got very controlling. Like they're just using you, don't tag them in anything. And so I would have to be very cautious about how I promoted, you know, the fact that I was on the cover of Penthouse. I thought it was so cool. Feel. Yeah, I feel like that too. 
Um, but they took me to AVN. I thought it was so cool. And they just let me at their booths and uh, let me kind of like do a tour of AVN and film me doing that. And then that night, I think it was like the Saturday night of AVN 2020, he just lock, uh, nudies locked me out of every account that I had, like all of my Instagram and everything. And we were all together with Penthouse and I just started crying because he had texted me like, you're done, you know, like, no heads uh, up at all. Just you're done and you can't get into any of your accounts. Yeah. Yeah. And I just thought like everything was over because I was still very young and I just kind of thought if I didn't have them, I was screwed and so right. I think and I that's what they bank on is that you're like well I, I don't know what success looks like without these people am I even capable of doing it on my own which you totally yes, are exactly yeah. yeah and penthouse was super sweet to me they were like look we'll help you do whatever you need to do and everything and I didn't talk to nudies for about a week after that um and then we had a conversation and they were like look like you don't need to leave. Um, everything's about to be really cool. Like we're about to blow up. We just wanted you to be safe. Like, you know, kind of. We it wanted really you to be weird. safe by logging you out of all of your accounts and then saying we're done. That's bullshit. Yeah. They That's wanted me to be so scared all the time. And I think my anxiety was just like through the roof. That's because, not how you like, treat. Uh, that's not a business relationship. That sounds very manipulative. It's like. Uh, even all of the, oh, this girl doesn't like you. That girl doesn't like you. Like that's so sophomoric. That's not, that's not how you run a business. That's not how you uh, deal with a colleague or someone you're managing. That's, that's really insane and so yeah. unprofessional. And the thing that, uh, like really drove me over the edge was learning how he treated other girls who he would hire, like the newer girls who he would hire like after 2021, I would say. No, it was like during 2020. They probably left in 2021. I was I found out that they would only get paid like two grand a month and it wasn't even on an actual payroll or anything. It was like through Cash App or, you know, whatever. Did the girls uh, and you have any clue how much money you were making for them? Um, We would give them 20%. Okay. Um, but there's no way that like some of those girls were only making two grand a month. You know, like I, when I first started, I was able to make at least two grand a week when I, on my first week. And so I was just so sad for them because I knew something was fishy. Um, and another thing is like, at one point I, we didn't get paid. The whole team didn't get paid for, from December 2021 to May 2022. We didn't get paid wow. OnlyFans for that long. I mean, he did come through at the end. Like, we got our full paycheck and everything. But it was, a big it was like, what the heck? What is going on, you know? Um, and it's just weird. Would Very they weird. help you, um, like, file your taxes and things like that? No. Were they, um, were they helping you, like, with you know, just business advice generally, or they were just, no, I, when I first asked about taxes, I had to figure that all out myself because when I first asked about it, he was like, don't worry about it. <laughs> just don't worry. <laughs> okay. And I would ask for like my 1099 and he'd be like, uh, yeah, I don't have that. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow. Yeah. And, right. No one's nobody, uh, who's 18 or even in their early twenties is really I was so thinking about taxes. For the longest time. So I'm confused. still confused about taxes even until 2020. And so I had to like catch up. Thank God I didn't make like that much before then, but I had to catch up. I'm drinking some wine by the way, guys. Yes, so. please. Like take a sip for me. <laughs> take a sip for the baby. I miss wine so much. I've gotten to the point, Violet, where I am smelling my friend's cocktails. I'm smelling their <laughs> wine. I haven't had a drink since, uh, well, September 1st, I guess. So I, <laughs> Oh my gosh, look at you. Sober mom. Sober <laughs> mom, boring mom. Yeah, I, I don't really like We're so fully. cute pregnant though. Like I want to be Aww. cute like that. I feel like my face is going to blow up like a balloon. I I am I expect any day to wake up with a full set of jowls and cankles. They have they're not here yet, but I'm just so lucky. It's really just 
it's really just the belly and i and i feel like a a cute potato um (laughs) you know like i worked so i worked so hard for like two years to get ready for my wedding and i just i didn't i didn't want to feel fat or worry about my body at all my wedding so i just like worked out like a ton and did a lot of intermittent fasting and keto and stuff and then like and now sometimes I look down, I'm like, is, is there a baby in there or is this just bread? You know? <laughs> <laughs> this is just what happens when you start eating bread and fruit again. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I had pizza last night and then I looked at my stomach. I was like, wow, I got a nice little food baby going on. Yeah. You're like, oh, it's a baby pizza. Um, <laughs> my God, that sounds like you went through so much with them. So they, they fired you. Then they were like, no, just kidding. Everything's going to be okay. Um, so when were things finally cut off with them and how did that happen? It wasn't until, I mean, I played it pretty cool with them for a while. And then I'm very thankful for my dear friend, Kiara Moon. I don't know if you've heard of her. Um, Moon. No. Yeah. Look her up. She's like this little cute Asian girl and she's just amazing. She's so, she's such a hard worker too, but um, she was also on the team and she kind of helped me out of my denial because for a long time I was like, yeah, but I think they're, you know, trying their best to make this team great and everything. And she's like, no, the way they do things is so manipulative. It's just bad business. I mean, they don't like, they were starting to be very controlling on our OnlyFans too. Like, Oh, you can't chat like this or post this. Um, It was just weird. And so she was, pointing out a lot to me that like, yes, it is messed up. She's a very smart girl. And um, she's the one that found the lawyer. Um, So yeah, where was I going with that? Good. Oh, like how you knew it was time to like, finally say goodbye. Yeah. And so when she left, finally, I was like, okay, let's game plan this. Like, I'm gonna do this. There's no there's no turning back once I do this. So I was very serious about it after that. And I was very nervous too about like it was going to be Armageddon, but mm-hmm. it wasn't. Everything has worked out very well. And I just feel like, like this last AVN that I just went to, it was more fun than both the two that I went to before because I just felt so much better about who I was talking to. When I would talk to people, I was just allowed to really connect with them i guess or um, like maybe trade contact oh. info but not have like yes, not ask exactly. them questions or yeah pick their brain or anything yeah and i didn't have to worry about like nudies looking over my shoulder and nudies being right there being like what are you doing why are you doing that would there so. be like nudies execs or um people from the like the company there at avn or would they just like send you girls out to go no, he didn't even want us going. Um, I'm pretty much the only nudies girl that went to AVN. Uh, nobody, nudies has never. You'd think they would have a table or something or have a. I know, booth. right? They're yeah. so against it, though. I don't really know why. When, they I'm like, you guys need to get out there. Yeah. yeah, I told the girls so many times, like, get out there and, you know, travel, post content of you traveling and. It's just so much more fun that way. But so many of them wanted to just stay in their home and be hermits. And I feel like everything kind of dies off eventually. Like you might do it for a while, but when you're just being like a hermit and not really putting yourself out there, nobody wants yeah. to see that. Really. <laughs> yeah. It gets boring. People like seeing IRL streaming and photos. And if they're genuine fans of you, they, they want to see you out and about and in different places. Yeah. Plus it's fun for you. That's fun. I don't want to stay home all day. <laughs> yeah, no, you can uh, you can do that when you're. We can stay home when you're dead. Um, Bob Gable, yeah. thank you for the super chat. You should go over the Vince McMahon charges. Do you think that was possible? Both of you, thanks. I don't know what that is. I don't know. I don't either. I was I like, wait, my little loop. <laughs> thank you, Bob. I don't know. I was like, is that relevant to what we're talking about? Um, George Habib podcast. Respectfully, why porn and not? modeling and acting can you be completely sure you won't regret this later is this something you encourage for young girls um i don't I, really think i, I wonder oh, if model model i don't know I, I think it's all this in a sense it's kind of all the same like you could actually start in modeling and acting 
and end up with an OnlyFans anyway in this day true. and age. That's um, true. OnlyFans is just something that allows girl it's, it's attractive to people because it, you can cut out the min middleman you don't need a certain agent or management to do only fans it's it's just you you don't have to cut somebody into a percentage of what you're making uh mm -hmm. i think that's the draw of only fans but like honestly that's probably just easier but was mo were modeling or acting ever a thought for you um acting yes i was in acting like theater growing up and I even took acting in Phoenix. I love it. Okay. I just have fun doing that. I never was like, like when I started this, I wasn't like, Oh my gosh, I'm going to be so successful on this. I just thought it was a way that I could have fun, make a few extra dollars, not have to work at a bowling alley anymore. So uh, that's yeah. just, I wasn't like, ever thinking I could make it in modeling. Plus I'm like five foot. I did joke around that I was going to get my knees done so I could be a model. <laughs> but Aww. yeah, um, I just thought I just started doing this for fun. I never thought I would be successful in it or anything. No. Yeah. I would say few girls are probably like looking ahead. Like what, what is my five or 10 year plan looking like this? Because I just remember like, uh, I mean, my first job out of college, I gave tours at Radio City Music Hall. I wore a three-piece polyester suit, like a little vest, <laughs> like this little jacket. And I remember, like, I would, I had to, I had to memorize a, a pamphlet this thick with all the facts about Radio City Music Hall in New York City. And then oh my this, gosh. it would just be these. It was nuts. I had to learn like who painted each bathroom. Georgia O'Keeffe painted one of the bathrooms, and then I would remember fun facts like they used to have live elephants in the shows and like the christmas shows but and they have all these pictures of like the elephants elephants are smart by the way the elephants would not get into the elevator because they could feel that it was a false bottom so they would take like one foot in and they'd be like nope so they have these pi pictures of these guys just like pushing the elephants down the stairs that's so funny. Uh, and I'm like, this is so cute. I'm like, so that's the shit that I remember. But like, I wasn't <laughs> thinking, do I want to give tours for the next five to 10 years? I was like, well, this is the job I was able to get. I mean, it paid shitty, but I don't know. I can almost like kind of know what you were kind of going through because I didn't have a lot of ton of guidance. I, I didn't have somebody sitting me down being like, here's what you're really good at. Here's what you have the potential to do. Mm -hmm. You're just like, Hey, I want to be making more money than I was at the last job. Uh, yeah. It's just kind so. of what you fall into. I think, especially when you don't like, I was going to go to college before I hit the road and I was like, I don't want to go to college. I'm going to waste money and I don't know what to do, what I'm going to be doing. I had no, game plan like I feel like a lot of my friends did and looking at my friends who I went to high school with they are like becoming doctors now and you know they're very successful and I think it's just because they had a plan I remember them being like from the third grade like I want to be a nurse or I want to be a doctor and I was like wow I don't know what I want to be you know yeah so I was the same way so did you like how far did you get did you did you apply to colleges did you start like looking at colleges like how far in that process did you did you get yeah like, like were, I, your, were your parents like will you have to at least you know were they pressuring you they were big about me going to call they weren't like oh let's you know walk you through every step they were just more like you got to get into college you got to apply for everything so I graduated early, a semester early, so that way I could start college early. Um, and that just wasn't really, the, like as soon as I graduated, I was like, oh, I'm not going to college, <laughs> you know? So um, they were pressuring me about it. My mom is still like, are you thinking about college, you know? But you could no. still go. Didn't Abella Danger just get into Someone just got into. I, think I heard about that. Yeah, I think it was. I think it was a Bella Danger. She just got into college, so it, it really is never too late if you want to. Yeah, I think I'm just more like I'll go if I want to learn something, <laughs> but not like 
if I want to major. Most people I, I, just go to go. That I mean, like that's the same thing, and, we, and we're all kind of like a product in a way of our parents because, like, my mom was a boomer. She just went to secretarial school, and she was like, "Well, all three of my kids have to go to college, no matter what." It wasn't like, "Hey, what are you good at? Hey, do you want? What do you want to be when you grow mm-hmm. up?" It was just kind of like, "You have to go to college because you three have to do better than I did." And uh, yeah, a lot of people think that that's like the answer once you get your degree you're set and you know what you're going to do after that. You know where you're going to make your paycheck at. But I don't like my mom went to college till like she got her master's when she was 40. And so it took her a long time and she doesn't even use her degree. She got a degree in social work, a master's in social work and she doesn't even use it. (laughs) And then my sister, she just graduated college. Like it took my family a long time everyone who went to college in my family a while to like graduate. And I'm like, I don't think we're very book smart in this family. (laughs) I think it's, you learn a lot and you gain a lot of like lifetime friends and a good networking group. But that's what I really think would be cool about college is getting those lifelong friends and a good networking group. I think, I mean, I thought I would have lifelong friends that I made in college and we were friends for a few years. And then I became like an open Trump voter. And then I noticed they all just quietly unfriended me on Facebook. And I was like, Oh, okay. That's so much for my lifelong friends. But uh, (laughs) I know it's funny. Like more people who I went to high school with, they don't like that. I like have supported Trump, but they don't mind that I do porn. I'm like, this is so backwards. (laughs) When but, did you start to like Trump? Um, I liked him back in high school, like in 2016. I remember having like debates with kids at the lunch table about, and I, I didn't even know what I was talking about, but I always thought Trump was cool. He just kind of says what he wants. I like people like that. He's real. He's not like a politician. So mm-hmm. I would That's do him. Most people like it. You would do him? <laughs> I mean, like, yeah, of all the presidents, yeah. <laughs> and JFK. JFK, of course. Like, he blows yeah. away the competition. We all do him. <laughs> Are there any other even uh, good-looking presidents other than J- JFK? No, like, Trump would be, that would be, like, personality and, and patriotism alone uh, for him. But, yeah, yeah. JFK is and the cute. confidence. Yeah. It's really yeah. that. He has BDE, for sure. Yeah. Did you so when you sort of became like an out Trump supporter, did you notice any backlash or any weirdness from anybody in the industry? Um not really. I mean, a lot of people in the industry actually like are Trump supporters too, <laughs> or I guess kind of conservative in some ways, but I feel like a lot of us are conservative in the way that we just want to be able to say the n-word and it not really matter. <laughs> that's like, all i want come on <laughs> is that so well, much can... to ask can't i just say the n-word does that make me a bad person <laughs> <laughs> come on guys i just want to be vulgar they're just, and they're just words <laughs> <laughs> and like they're yes exactly they're just words they don't mean anything that like you know gavin mcginnis i love that i man. love gavin he came to my <laughs> wedding he's a doll yeah are you kidding me oh yeah, my gosh he's, you're he's living the dream for for years yeah he's he's super cool he's so he's one of the most misunderstood guys he's so funny he's stylish he's smart but like I would do him too. You would do <laughs> right if you just if all you know of him is what you've read online, you're you're gonna think horrible things about him. But he's, he's no, watch, guys, watch his podcast like on censored TV. It's it's so funny, and he says he has some valid points. Um, and I just like the like Mary from the Mary Morgan. I think is her last name. I love I like Mary her. Morgan. She's great. She doesn't like me, but I like her what? because why? She... <laughs> well, I don't think she doesn't like me. She doesn't care for me and my profession. But Her she just says friends. what she wants to say, and she doesn't care what anyone thinks. She she's just gonna be herself, and even if it's crazy and people aren't expecting it, she's she's gonna do it. I really appreciate people like that. You know, a lot of people have seen you on the Whatever podcast, and it reminds me of um, this girl, Christy St. Regis, who I've had on 
uh, my podcast a couple of times. She was on whatever. She loves Trump. And I feel like she is in that place where she just says and does whatever the fuck she wants. And she doesn't feel. Um, That's like so cool. Please anybody. But she's a cool chick. I wonder if I'll introduce you guys. Okay. I have, I have some pull. No, I don't know. <laughs> I'll just send a DM. But you you can be that person. Um right now i mean you can you can say the n-word on compound media maybe i mean uh, i don't know gavin says it just about every time i have him on my stream anyway but uh i don't know like, i know he also I, seems like <laughs> such a softy you know like he has a big heart i feel like like he does he always ends his show with something so heartwarming and just a cute little video or something i don't know i'm just like he's just like a dad he, gives mm -hmm. dad vibes. he really is. He really is like a dad. I remember before I got engaged, he was like, I had him on a, uh, a show. It was like, a, I think it was Simcast. It was like a panel show with a lot of people. And he was giving me a ton of shit. I think he was giving Frank a ton of shit for us not being engaged. And then I think we got engaged like the next, a, a week or two later. And it was so funny because it was like this moment of like, oh, did <laughs> Gavin, Gavin finally, uh, Gavin's pressure got to you. But I guess <laughs> it was in the works already. And he's he just sent me a, really nice messages you know when i got engaged Aww. and when i told when i told him i was pregnant too like just genuinely sweet and like he said you know we send each other christmas cards it's like he's a i don't know i think he's a cool dude oh so Frank, you already had the ring i didn't know <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh is this him yes <laughs> yeah that's Frank. how cute i can't believe y'all have gavin as a family friend i'm like Y'all are living the dream. <laughs> how did it how did it start? I think it started well, he uh because I have a show on compound media and he's good friends with Anthony Cumia and he's 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 collabed and known uh Anthony for years. And I think it was maybe a couple of years ago I was like, I uh I asked our station manager if I could have Gavin's email because I was like, Oh, I would love to have him on my one on one podcast and then had him on a few times and then he started coming, you know, back on, on compound where he would start doing a weekly show with Anthony called like compound censored, which they still do on Wednesdays. Mm -hmm. And then he's yeah, hilarious. Like, he's so funny. He's so <laughs> smart. He's very misunderstood, but that's so cool. Um, yeah. If you're ever in New York, like come to compound, you could do all the shows and hang. I'm considering that an invite. I'm coming. <laughs> a full blown invite. Yeah. <laughs> My show is on Mondays, but um, uh, my friend my friend Gino's show in Hot Water is Monday through Thursday, and uh, there's a couple other shows on the network too. But ours, cool. ours the best. And now Anthony is doing his show out of uh, his studio in South Carolina, but he will occasionally uh, come into the city. So, and then I'm sure like Gavin would have you on censored. Come on, Gavin. No, I ran into <laughs> someone at AVN and he was like a fan. And he was just kind of talking about how I post little conservative things sometimes. And I was saying Gavin was one of my favorite podcasters. And he was like, I literally interviewed him like a year ago. And I'm like, what the heck? Everyone I talked oh, to wow. lately, like interviewing Gavin, they, they're friends with Gavin. So I'm all jealous. <laughs> that's actually it's really nice for you to for me to hear you say that I'll, that you're around a lot of performers that are kind of more conservative because I always thought just like from all the uh, girls I've interviewed and like that do mainstream porn is that the industry is very left leaning and you have to be kind of closeted if you are a conservative or a right wing at all. Mm -hmm. That genuinely, well, especially I kind of like, an outcast anyway. Like I'll. Just oh. I don't really know like what the trend is all the time. I just kind of say what I say. And then if people don't like it, I guess I don't really know if they do, but um, there are like, I'll tell people I live in Texas and they're like, you don't have women's rights. And I'm like, you know, well, that's so stupid. What a stupid thing to say. Oh my God. Like I have as many rights as you do, but it's fine. Um, yeah. Texas is great. I love Texas. I was born here, raised here. Glad to be back. I love being by my family. So, okay, that's good. <laughs> that's good. When did you feel like you were an outcast? Um. Well, I'm not like an outcast. I just I kind of do my own thing. Like I'm not in like whenever I was around all of the mainstream, they're like a family. They 
they talk to each other like they're so close and then they fuck each other. I'm like, wow, this is crazy. They're like <laughs> a family that fucks each other. I don't know. And <laughs> oh. I just kind of was like very shy, like, how do I fit in here? But I really admire them all. I just, I guess I'm not in it all the time, totally. <laughs> Who have you enjoyed um, collaborating with the most? Oh, definitely Kiara. Kiara is like my number one because I'm not like crazy lesbo, but I do. I like I like to get drunk and make out with girls, or you know, who does that? Yeah. yeah, right. Like you know, good old drunk making out, and I like to do it with my friends like we're playing with our pussies next to each other um and I feel like Kiara is just like she's adorable and we have a lot of good chemistry so I love collabing with her um I've recently gotten to collab with like Ashley Skies I don't know if you know who that is I but don't know her. I thought we were so cute I like when I like cute next to the girl you know like we both kind of match and I feel yeah. like you we'll can like share Ashley clothes or something I yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm like, we are like sisters right now. Um, but Viking Barbie, when we collabed, like she just, I'm very submissive naturally. So that's why I think I'm not as good with girls, but she'll like take control. She like choked me. I was like, whoa. You, and then she like, really, she knows how to, you she know, knows she's doing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm like, yeah, she really is good. So I was very impressed with her skills. Um, had a lot of fun with her. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, are you are you friends with any of the girls that you knew from nudies? Like, do you still keep in touch with them? No, none of them hit me up after I left. I haven't talked to any of them. Um, you think yeah. they were told not to contact you, or definitely? Ugh. Yeah, because it sounds like you were getting along with most of them I mean you're doing all these like content house things together yeah they were all we were all cool with each other um but none of them hit me up or anything I mean some of us were really close to like we had our own little friend group in Phoenix of the nudies girls and none of them hit me up except obviously Kiara because she helped me do all of this but she's not a part of nudies anyway so this doesn't really count <laughs> wow that's so insane do you, is there anything you've done so far in your career, like that you would have done differently now that you, you know, you're a few years in and you have perspective, like how you would have handled something differently, like whether it's like a creative decision, like a, like a collab or I guess a business decision. Um, a lot of the time, like I'll think a lot about that time with Penthouse that I was fired and I could have left for good. I think about that a lot because I'm just like, what would have happened like if I would have left? It was right before COVID and everything too, where I feel like a lot of us kind of blew up when COVID happened. And so I just kind of wonder about that, but I don't regret anything because I just feel like it made me who I, like I know what I know today because of what I went through. So I don't really regret it, Yeah, but I do wonder. <laughs> Like if you had left nudies at that time or if you had left penthouse, you mean? If I left pen uh, nudies, sorry. If I okay. left okay. nudies at that time. Well, it's understandable because it sounds like he was like, Oh, just just kidding, <laughs> you know, oh we'll work it out. You know, they they're kind of banking on the fact that you guys are young and don't have a ton of business experience and feel like you need them, like they're your your life raft mm -hmm. into success. So yeah, like, and then he would tell us to find girls and we would get some of their commission for about a year. We'd get their commission and he'd be like, we don't want any girls with a big account or anyone who's been in the industry for long. We want them very new and young. Um, and I'm just like, why is that? You know, Like, why would you not want to bring a powerhouse onto the team? Right. Someone with a huge following. Like, isn't that more business for them? Yeah. And it's just because they want the credit for building up that girl and then they want them to think that they can't do anything without them. Yeah. Yeah. Make like, make you feel like you, you need them or else you won't succeed. Mm -hmm. Damn. That sucks. Okay. Do you, re you regret anything um, 
like content wise that you've done or would do differently? No, everything I've done, I've been very comfortable with. And I, it's pretty, for me, it's pretty much like every time I do something sexual, I record it. <laughs> um, so it's not like I'm finding people to do. Th it's like I'm going on a date and then if we have, you know, sex or something like that, I'm going to record it. Um, so yeah, I've been very comfortable with everything I've done. What, um, what have been some of your weirdest, uh, like only fans requests? I think the weirdest thing for me, I like to pee. Only fans doesn't allow like peeing or pooping, <laughs> but I like to pee just like when I'm in my van, I like to open the door and then just pee out my van real quick. Cause it's just easy and it's fun. Like squat, like get out of the seat or you just pee in the seat. <laughs> I open the door and out. then I squat out the van okay. and I'm like spraying it out. And then I send it you know, out to people. I kind of like, well, I don't record it, but I kind of like peeing outside too. And I just don't like to wait. Like if yeah, I can get away, I if I can like get away cleaner. with it, I pee outside. Don't you feel like it's cleaner? Like you're not dealing with the confined toilet of everyone there's, else's there's for me honestly there's a sneakiness that i kind of like like if i'm coming home late from the city and i have to, i have to walk to my car that's parked at the train station and if it's like nobody is around and i really have to go I, i'll just pee next to my car i'm <laughs> sorry it's just like it's funny to me and it's like it takes two seconds and i'd rather do that than like really you know because it's an hour on the train the train bathroom is disgusting and then you yeah. can't really wait another 15, 20 minutes to pee when you're home. So you just pee outside. Big deal. That's great. That's so naughty. <laughs> it doesn't feel naughty. I think it, it's just like funny to me. <laughs> like, I, I think it's like silly. But yeah, I mean, if someone ever caught me, I'd be mortified. But I, I'm not, I can't get down with the pooping. Like, no. The pooping, I'm like, that's a little personal. <laughs> Have you been asked that? Yeah, I've been asked that quite a bit of times. And I'm like, not yet. No, like maybe one day I'll be done with it. I gotta be swayed, but I just can't, I can't get done with it. I can't, I couldn't get down with it because I can't just generate poop on command. Like I'm not, yeah. uh, it's not something that is happening frequently. I don't know. You gotta focus. <laughs> It has to be the right time. It's like, yeah. it depends what you eat, what's going on. You can't just like, it's not like have a pee. perfect solid. No. Yeah. The, I think this is like, I think men can poop on command. I think men always have like a poop ready to go one in the chamber, That's but like so women, cool. it's like, we know we're, we're always constipated. It's very, we're yeah, very we have emotional. stomach issues. <laughs> yes. It's very mind body connection. Uh, Hot girls have IBS. Like, <laughs> Yes, we have IBS. We're, emo <laughs> we're emotional. We're lactose intolerant. We've there's a lot going there's on. There's a lot going on. <laughs> oh yes, sure. I used to poop in my yard as a kid, not because I enjoyed it, but because I was a I would forget the key to my house uh, all the time. And uh, my mom, my mom and dad both worked, so I would just like get off, uh, walk home, or take the bus home, and I would just hang out in the backyard. And sometimes I would have to poop and. Uh, this was a, as a kid, though. So, and I just wait. How do you wipe? With well, a leaf? leaves. <laughs> yeah, there was a. There were some big bushes nearby with like with wide leaves. Luckily, none of them were ever like poison ivy. But I definitely remember exactly what kind of bushes they were. <laughs> they were like they had big leaves, and then you, I just would sort of either bury it or throw it over the fence, not with my hands. Ooh. At least you have like you can focus because you're no one's watching you. You can focus. Yes, because we had woods on the <laughs> the backyard. It's not like, I mean, it was the suburbs, but like no one could see because we had woods in the backyard. So wait, where'd you grow up? Long Island. Oh wow, that's crazy. Long Island, yes. And then I lived in Brooklyn. I lived in Queens. I'm in Westchester now. I've been all over. I went to school in Connecticut, so and I've spent a lot of time in Jersey. So I'm really like an expert on the tri-state area. You're a true like New Yorker. That is so cool. 
I know. I wish I could get drunk for you, and then my Long Island accent would really come out, but <laughs> we'll have to wait. Oh, my God. We have a special, special guest, Violet. I don't know if you're familiar. I, I don't know. I, I heard recently that you might be a big fan of this guy. It's <gasps> Kevin! Oh, you're kidding. You're kidding. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Big fan. Hey. I was just watching you earlier. <laughs> What's up? It's probably a really old video. Do you have a Novocaine <laughs> mouth right now? What's going on? <laughs> I don't know if you guys heard about the accident, but I, I'm learning to walk and talk again. Oh, no. What happened? When did, you, uh, when did this accident happen? About three years ago. All the videos out there are pretty old. Oh, Wow. <laughs> You're doing yeah, a good just, job at keeping up with current events. Wow, you put on a very good front. You seemed very normal at my wedding. <laughs> yeah, that was five years ago. I uh, I got hit with one of those Walmart trucks that hit Tracy Morgan. Oh, wow. Like, <laughs> I got a fort. You got, oh, you got a you fart? Like you're in your man cave right now. No, they built a fort at the hospital. And oh, it's yeah. like my own fort. fort in my room. Wow. I'm like in shock right now. Violet is a huge, huge fan of yours, Gavin. Well, yeah, hope... even with your state of being, I'm like, you're hot. <laughs> uh, oh, if you like the 2.0 version. <laughs> So, like, what do we talk about? Yeah, um, Gavin, do you... <laughs> how's your recovery going? Like, how's your wife? I'm actually better now. It's, it's oh, oh my God, it's a miracle. We yeah. hear him. Of all the times for you guys to call, you call when I come out of my sort of a coma. Are wow. you drunk? No. Oh. <laughs> I can be there. Gonna... Um, Violet's oh. a huge fan of yours. She loves Sensor TV. Oh, great. I do. I she, love your show. Big fan. She, all she wants is to be able to day. say the N-word, but that's the only thing that's holding her back in life. Yeah. Oh, it just, you go like this, nigger. <laughs> oh, my God. I Wait, you're so on hard. YouTube. I felt... <laughs> We're on YouTube, Gavin. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I've been banned for so long, like, I don't even know what things you can't say or do anymore. <laughs> He's just used to doing what he wants. I love that. Me too. And I used to flash my tip wherever I want. I thought if I Violet's could do ever it in New York, um, so you're, I said you're finally she, part of the Me Too movement. Oh, yeah. I guess so. <laughs> we said Me Too. Me Too. Um, I said, Gavin, if Violet is ever in New York, she she could come on Censored, possibly. Yeah, she should come on my face, too. <laughs> Same. I give really good head. <laughs> oh, man. I'm just kidding. But I will come. I'm coming, Not like, kidding. tomorrow. Like, seriously. Aww. Yeah, we should do a big sit-down talk. Where? What were you guys talking about before I became a retard? We were talking about OnlyFans. And actually, Violet used to work with this management company who were very manipulative. And she had like 13 million Instagram followers. And they took her account and gave it to some other girl. They were very controlling. Um, so yeah, now she's listened since I was 18. Well, I mean, you're in the sex industry. It's you're a, you're a prostitute. You're going to have pimp behaviors where they're going to manipulate you and take your money and... It's still yeah, that's what my business. lawyer called him. My lawyer called him a pimp. I was yeah. like, oh, I never saw it that way. <laughs> yeah. I mean, why have a manager anyway? Yeah. I mean, a lot of girls don't. I mean, most girls don't. So when you're 18 and you're just getting started, you I don't know. Yeah. You just kind of think, oh, this is. This is the way to go. All these big girls are under this yeah. guy. Like so. showbiz. You need a you need someone to show you the ropes. No pun intended. I um, guess. When do you stop doing this? Oh. What? When do you stop doing the OnlyFans type of stuff? At 28. 
So and four, then, I like four years. Four more years of this. Four and more. You, <laughs> and then you find a guy? Yeah. Okay. That's what she said on the whatever so, podcast. Yeah, she'll do four more years. Okay, as long as you don't drift into MILF and then GILF. And then your life has passed you by. When is too when is too late to quit? What? Yeah, but when do you think it's too late to quit? I mean, I I you know how I feel about porn. I think it's a it's a vice. I don't think it's a good idea at any age. Yeah, he but, doesn't like it. <laughs> but as far as like uh as far as when I don't know, that's a weird question. Because let's say I did love porn and think it was awesome. I find women attractive well into their fifties, so I wouldn't True. really, I wouldn't really say an age, but it's it's a weird question because, like, as far as that individual woman's currency goes, like she should stop as soon as she can. But if you're talking about, say, I was a consumer, I'd be like, yeah, I'd like to see some big droopy jugs. <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, it's the cellulite on the ass. I am like taking my people on a journey since I was 18, so maybe they want to see me get pregnant and then like milk you know i'm just <laughs> see you literally get pregnant yeah like here's where it yeah. happened I and then like maybe they want to see me be a grandma and you know fucking my pussy as a grandma who knows i don't think I, so though i didn't like that last one we did christy where we totally where everyone jumped on that porn star and called i didn't like that either gavin she blocked me she blocked me she blocked frank she stopped returning my calls we were good friends until that episode and then it's she just, and it's not your won't fault talk but to it's me not anymore the, it's it, not the she time felt, or the place she thought i set her up and i'll never i feel like i'll never be able to uh, i'm so confused guys. What happened? I, I had this? Brandy Love on, who was a friend. Oh, okay. And uh, Alex Stein and Millie Mac just started calling her a whore <laughs> and uh, a, a bit of a pile on. And she felt like I set her up and I couldn't, I, I wasn't able to explain, like, no, it wasn't a setup. And I felt horrible. And, like, you know, you can't control people on your show. I, like, I'm not going to tell people what they can or cannot say or do or what questions they can or cannot ask. I just, it was a, it was a big episode. I invited a ton of people. I never thought all these people would have been on at the same time. And it just so happens. It was like Melody Mack, Alex Stein, Ann Coulter, Br uh, Brandy Love, Gavin was on. And I would love it if you all called me a whore. I would be like, yes, <laughs> I am. Yeah. No I was going to say that. Like, th th there's no such thing as an ambush. That's a mythical thing. Unless you have secrets. Like, remember, what's his name with the beard? Who was Jack on Murphy. Sort of yeah, Jack Murphy. Yes. So he did have skeletons in his closet, so he considered the question oh, yeah. an ambush. I don't think it was. She was just naive, and that appeared on the chat question. But if, if you're in this industry, and I mean media, there's no such thing as an ambush. You should well, if you're not expecting, it. right, if you're not expecting to be, I think anytime you go on any platform, you should be able to explain yourself, your opinions, your life choices. And, uh, yeah. right. It's like when you do an interview and people go, is anything out of bounds? And you're like, yeah, yeah my affair, uh, the fact that I'm addicted to heroin and then <laughs> a pop thing, don't go near that with a 10 foot pole. Otherwise, yeah, let's chat. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like most girls in the industry though, call themselves whores. So I don't see why that would be a problem for other people to call you a whore. Well, also, remember that girl who walked out of your other show because someone said the N-word? Sarah uh, J. Yeah. And she and says the N-word during her porn. So it's only okay when she says it. Wait, is she black? No, it's no. Sarah J. <laughs> That's she, kind of cool that she says it during her porn. But why she, she like, get mad? frames it into the guy's face while she's being plowed. And I'm like, okay, well, that's okay to say. But it, she got offended because someone else said it to someone else on a show she happened to also be on. But she had nothing to do with the situation. She just was, like, being offended, you know, going out of her way mm -hmm. to be offended and walk off to, like, you know, make a show of it. So okay. that was annoying. How do you feel about here. porn, Chrissy? Why do you have so many porn stars on your show? I think it's, uh, I find it oh, interesting, like the psychology behind it. I find, wait, what? I was just fixing my pregnancy jeans, which come up to right under my boobs. 
Whoa, Is those big... your bazooms are fucking ginormous. Mine? That, yeah. I'm trying to. I'm only. Sh- you know, uh, this is boot. This is a boob window. Yeah, they're uh, they're trying. They're trying to escape, I guess. She like got such a good pregnancy. She got the big boobs, and then like everything else. Everything tiny. else is thin and chic. Gavin, I've yeah. always been interested in like the psychology aspects of why people get into it and why people like it, and I, I, I think it's interesting, like why people have certain kinks. Like, am I a big porn watcher myself? No, I'll, I'll watch like occasionally like uh, something my friend does or uh, like I'll watch like I'm a supportive aunt like okay wow good for my friend but I don't like I don't think to sit down and watch it uh very much at all and what kind well. of porn have you watched like in your life um, if you ever have if I if I was like uh, that is interesting I well for my show wet spot Kevin's gone if he comes back I'll bring him back Oh, he's back. Oh, um, I think it's fun to watch holiday porn. Like on uh, on my show, like we'll watch if it's Thanksgiving, we watch the Thanksgiving porn. When it was Christmas, we watched a funny like Christmas porn. Like I kind of, I think you the like ones themes. That, the ones that are trying to be funny. I think are hilarious because it's it's just a lot of bad plots, and uh, I can definitely ruin a porn because I'll just like oh the lamps don't match. The couch cover isn't good. Wait, Christy, can you hear me? Yes. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Uh, This is embarrassing, but because I'm so addicted to social media, I have this app called Opal that doesn't let me look at its social media from 7 to 11. So that's why I got kicked (laughs) off. Oh, (laughs) wow. Good for you. Everyone should have that. Opal? Opal, O-P-A-L. And I I was able to talk to you because I I gave myself a 15-minute break. But... um. Can you text me this link and then I'll get get it through text and then okay. it won't kick me off? Okay, I'll try that. Okay, thanks. Okay, bye. bye. <laughs> I'm so happy he's on right now. Like, is it you have fun? No idea. <laughs> I um I'm 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 glad you liked it cuz I just was like I normally don't like to furiously text uh like while I'm doing an interview, but the Frank was like, see if you can get Gavin on. I'm like, all right, let's see if we can. Thank you, Frank. <laughs> he, he's a goofball. He is so he is such a weirdo. Um, all right. He's like, why do you why do you interview porn stars? And I I think it's interesting. And I, I don't appreciate how people demonize uh folks in the sex industry or they'll they'll say things like well I, I disregard your whole opinion because you've done only fans or you've done i don't know well i think it's funny when um they just come like on the whatever podcast like they're so quick to come at the girls but and i said this before but it didn't really come out that right mary was like so you're blaming the patriarchy and i was like Oh, well, I didn't mean it like that. But I just meant, like, like Pornhub is made by a man, right? Like, what else is it? OnlyFans is made by a man. Men a by A certain porn. type of man. <laughs> they won't say that anyway. <laughs> but, um, yeah, but they're really quick to just come at the girls that just kind of work here. <laughs> and sex, like, isn't prostitution, like, the oldest... Well, either it, that it, or it, oldest profession, either that or HVAC. Yeah. I can't remember. Yeah. <laughs> but here's the so, other thing. Like, there's uh, people, we, we had, I'd always have Mercedes Carrera on my show before she went to prison. And uh, people go, oh, you're a hypocrite. You say that porn I don't is know who that is. Who She's is? like, uh, she did MILF probably by the time you tuned in. She's been in jail for five years now. Oh, no. But, no um, yeah, she did, she did a lot of tranny stuff. Um, oh. But anyway... I was like, yeah, I disagree with Mercedes. She's a very close friend, and we would argue on the show about it. And and this whole notion that you can't have people you disagree with. Like, I'm doing a documentary right now about free speech, and when one person finds out that someone else is in it, they go, I can't be in it. I, like, hate no, it I hate that. I hate that so friends. much. Yeah. It, it means that you guys are on the same show. Like Nick Fuentes. I'm pro-Jew. I'm a Zionist. Uh, I, I obviously recognize the problems that the Groypers are bringing up. I just say that you guys are using it as a crutch and blaming everything on that. Um, mm-hmm. But I still talk to Nick all the time. 
Or Anthony Cumia. He plays video games all day. He didn't get married and have kids. His girlfriend's way too young for him. You know, I <laughs> disapprove of a ton of shit he does. And it's it's funny. Like the other day, he was talking about you this, guys are still this, friends. This, yeah. this fake golf club that it's like vir- virtual reality where you can use this golf club and it, it's weighted like a golf club, but it's VR. You know, you have the headset for it. And I, I text him. I go, hey, asshole, here are three of the most beautiful golf courses in america they're within an hour of your house and you're sitting here talking about the best virtual reality golf out there i go leave the fucking house oh i love it yeah (laughs) he's about to hit his prime golfing years anyway but that's what i like uh that's what's good about you gavin and it's just a very shitty leftist thing this whole idea uh, and i don't really often see right wingers doing this this whole like i have to be able to speak for and defend Every point of view, my friends, anyone I've ever streamed with, anyone I've ever worked with, like you have to immediately disavow or disassociate or get off that show or else you'll be canceled by proxy. And I, I, that's one of my biggest pet peeves. Me too. You know, it's a real plague. It's a, there's a couple things going on here too. There's the lack of debate in society, right? And I spent tens of thousands of dollars paying liberals to come on my show and debate conservatives. Um, and I've kind of given up on that, bridging the gap and all that. Like, fuck you. However, you know, my liberal relatives are obviously still invited for Thanksgiving and and Christmas and everything. I'll never do anything like that. But I'm not interested in 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 appeasing the left and getting them to like us again. That being said, I'm happy to talk to any of them at any time. They'll just – how many times have you seen it? They debate someone on the right and they fucking – it's a cat playing with a mouse before he eats it. They lose. So I'm happy to play with you before I eat you, but it's not going to be a fair debate. Mm-hmm. No, and that's why a lot of them won't even do it. Destiny is one of the few uh, leftists that will debate, that will go on shows like Tim Cast or any of these other bigger podcasts. And that's why he's in so much stuff, because he'll actually show up and uh, and talk. And he gets devoured. <laughs> I think I would get devoured too. I'm horrible at debating or explaining my thoughts. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm learning. I like to listen. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> but do you get what I'm saying? I'm kind of contradicting myself. On the one hand, I'm saying, fuck the left. I'm done with them. It's a national divorce. I give up. On the other hand, I'm also saying, I will talk to anyone at any time, have any guest on the show. I guess the difference between those two things is in the old days, I wanted to like bridge the gap. And I was, I wanted to like, can we find our common ground? And now I'm just like, no, you're stupid. I'm smart. You're retarded and a loser and you're ruining America. I'm happy to tell you why. Right. If you're the only one that wants to bridge the gap uh, and talk, you get tired of being the only one who's putting in the effort and, tr- and trying yes. to have a conversation. Cause you realize the other side is not interested in that. They just want to dominate. They want to completely silence the opposition and they they hate us it's like dennis prager says he's stealing from charles krauthammer they think we're evil we just think they're wrong right so how do you bridge that gap like if you're Mm -hmm. it's like being a witch during the salem witch trials you're like i'm not a witch oh yeah we're gonna drown you you know what fuck you Mm -hmm. yeah you can't like argue with that i love your show though like i love how you're not afraid to like make a mistake in your show or just kind of say something wrong you know it's just it's so like take you along with this journey and unorganized i i I love it and you say whatever you want you don't care i really admire that i'm glad you appreciate that i kind of stole that from this band fisher spooner who would be on stage and they they had this these big choreographed uh look i have a web shooter and then you go is that a sex toy what is that? It's my Looks kid's like... web shooter. Oh, is it shoots actual your webs? Rip. Dude, you have no, like a whole a string. And then you go. Yeah, he's he's in his man cave. That is so cool. <laughs> but um, yeah, Fisher Spooner would do this thing. They'd have these choreographed dances, and and um, emerge was the song, and there's a huge stage thing, and then he had a little mouthpiece and things, and he would just stop, and he goes, stop, stop, stop. What are you doing? And the dancers would be, all be up there and it'd be like, you guys aren't supposed to go up there until the, the breakdown of the song. And so it was kind of fake choreographed too. I, thought, I don't think they were real mistakes. So then they would walk back down 
the sort of stairway that they were up for this big grandiose finale. And it was just such a cool way to present art. And that yeah. makes you immune during debates and everything because you're just like, oh, really? Well, I thought it was the other way around. Mm. Like, you don't care. Yeah. It's nice. People can see how the sausage is made. It's, it's nice to pull back the curtain a little bit. And if something goes wrong, you're like, oh, it's fine. Not the end of the world. I love it. Yeah, I used to say that to the cleaning staff, too. Like, uh, when you're here for filming, just mop around us. Like, isn't that it? It's, <laughs> it's cooler to have some Mexican lady sweeping in front of your desk as you're doing a show. That's great. Yeah. I'm sure it's people authentic. like that, actually. You should do that with OnlyFans. You can queef. We actually make a shirt. It says, I don't break for queefs. No, I actually do. Like, if I'm live, I, I definitely queef. And I'm like, sorry. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> I guess you say excuse me, like with a fart. I guess yeah. that would be more ladylike. When you queef, like in poor, like do they say God bless you? Like it's a sneeze? Like how is it treated? <laughs> People are like, <laughs> it, oh my God, it's so air hot. leaving your body, you know? I can't queef on command though. Some women are like, I was like, going queefing on to queef on command. Yeah. Well, the origin of God bless you is you sneeze and then demons can get in because you, you're, there's a vacuum. So they say, God bless you, to sort of protect it from the demons. They don't say it with farts or burps, so I don't think they'd say it with queefs. But demons well, might get in your queef hole. You're like, <laughs> it's opening up for the demons to come in. So I would say that if I were a demon, that would be the first place I would go, the queef hole. <laughs> maybe that's why you do OnlyFans. A demon got in after a queef. <laughs> Too many queefs, yeah. I have a paranormal activity in my pussy. <laughs> You you must yell safety before someone calls doorknob. What? Oh, he's Make talking about if it, 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 safety slug is a high school game boys play where if you oh. burp or fart and you don't say safety, we get to beat you up until you can name five breakfast oh. cereals, which is where or I got the all... idea for the Proud Boys. Thing. Oh, that's no. funny. Yeah, it's Or fun. if someone queefs, you go like, not it. And then the last person to touch their nose has to... <laughs> Do, yeah. do the dishes You're having something. sex with a girl and if she queefs and doesn't say safety, you get to beat the shit out of her until she can name five breakfast <laughs> Oh my gosh. You have to explain that to the police. <laughs> <laughs> it's a game. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Uh, oh my funny god. Stuff. Uh, oh my god. I need um, to do this... like a video like that now. Yeah. Um, naming... <laughs> Look at this <laughs> fun thing I got. It's pre-made old-fashioned. Yes, I had one of those in the fridge for a while. I had one like that, but it was like a cosmopolitan. They're they're really good. Yeah, I That's think we have one of those too. That's pretty hardcore. I'm drinking this. Is it Jordan or Jordan? <laughs> Maybe it's it Jordan. Like, yeah, I would say Jordan. I don't know. I was just like, oh, maybe I'll just have a glass of wine. Is that a cabernet? Is that red wine? Yeah. Do you think it's really a suitable time to be drinking blood-like juice from a, a bottle that says Jordan on it? It's never, <laughs> never a non-suitable time. <laughs> a little insensitive. Wait, didn't we just bomb them or something? I don't know what's yeah, going on. There's blood, there's blood oh. pouring down the streets, and you're just like, ah. Well, it's in honor of them, then. Nope. <laughs> She's pouring one out I'm for them. them. Thinking yeah. of you. We just lost three mil military folks of color in Jordan. Oh, wow. Yeah. God bless the U.S. And Did the, you hear that but, cringe Jean-Pierre, the press secretary? She's like, so what, we lost three, uh, three uh, uh, military, uh, military people, folks, military folks. Um, who so were she almost said people of color? I don't. Know. I, I think she doesn't know. Like, if you say army, navy, air force, military, oh, okay, uh, personnel, like soldiers, people of weapons, right? <laughs> people of weapons. People of weapons <laughs> destruction. Oh I haven't God. listened to her in a long time. It's really hard for me to like listen to what she says without. She's retarded. Yeah. She's, do you know how many times she would have been fired? Like if you imagine a white male said uh, three military folks were killed in Jordan, bye bye. Yeah, you're be like, Here's your box. Pack up your desk. She could she could just come out on stage nude and explosive diarrhea on the curtain behind her, and people would be like, "Well, she's under a lot of stress. Let's give her a rest." Well, well she's a brave person of color. Cut her some slack. 
brave lesbian. You think she's lesbian. better than that Jen Psaki girl? Oh. No. Worse. Jen Psaki was worse. more fun to make fun of. Yeah. Psaki was, With her yeah. Um, and her, I will we'll circle back. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're both terrible. <laughs> it's sort of like the mayor of Chicago, like uh, Brandon Johnson versus um, Lori Lightfoot. Like we're dealing oh. with levels. It's like Beetlejuice versus Gary the Retard. It's hard. But to with Corinne Jean Pierre, I did love her in Get Out. Uh, I think she was great in that movie. <laughs> she, was, she was good. In that. Have you noticed, by the way? I, I started a new show with my kid. It's my youngest boy. He's eleven. It's called uh, Mothron. Mar- that monster thing with Godzilla. Mothra. Mothra. Mar- no. What the fuck is it called? Anyway, it's it's on. Apple TV and it's it's what's his name from Escape from New York, isn't it? Russell Oh my god, I'm Grant? so old. No, Grant the Escape from New York guy. Moth Mother Moth anyway. Monarch Mothra. Monarch, that's it. Oh, okay. And there's this Japanese scientist in it, and she's a woman. Okay, that's okay. It's okay. And they all <laughs> females in movies and TV shows now, especially action. They have this like cunty attitude where like she's driving a Jeep. She picks up this guy who's going to be protecting her and she she gets she's driving the Jeep and he goes, uh, would you want me to drive? And she's like, why are you scared? And her face is like this, like. Uh, yeah, they try to make them like manly. They like to be condescending. And, and, and not just any man like Biff from Back to the Future, or like a, one of the worst dicks, this weird, arrogant bully like snatching the cigarette out of your mouth and lighting it and being like, I could do with a cigarette. And you're like, fuck <laughs> off. They're all well, cunts. Yeah, they are. Do you notice like in commercials now, they make the guys, like they always make like the white guys very dumb. Like if there's a white dad in it, he's like oh, yeah, trying to do the dishes and he doesn't know how to do it. They're just, like, doddering, they're doofy. They're like- Yeah. I'm like, what are you charge. <laughs> Yeah, that's There's a whole purpose. Twitter feed of that. I think it's called White Men in Commercials. Oh, it, really? I just saw one the other day at the, the foot, was it the foot? Oh, the Grammys. And it has this black guy driving a car very well. And it goes, you don't want your rates to reflect other rates. You don't want it to reflect Paul. And this guy, Paul, is like a white guy in a mustache doing donuts, which is not really the pattern here, folks. Ah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> And then it has yeah. No, or, Paul, like, who's more likely to carjack you, Paul or the other guy? Okay. Yeah. Well, they had three dumb whites. One was called Sarah, and she was crying and like swerving all over the road. And then the other guy was Billy, and he's playing some Candy Crush game on his iPad as he drives. But here's another example of the new cunt. Um, you know that Obama thing on Netflix uh, about the end of the world, yeah, and it's the black black couple, a black dad and his daughter. And then a white uh, guy and his wife, and they rented his super nice house as an Airbnb. But it's the apocalypse, so he—it's like they left us behind or something. And the the white, the, sorry, the black daughter, she doesn't have to be like that. But she's all like, "Yeah, what are you gonna do about it?" And she's like, "I don't like them. They're fucking racist." And then she goes, she tries to seduce him to see if he's true to his wife, and he turns out he is Ooh. not gonna cheat on his wife. And I don't understand how they made this character because all you're doing is creating this cunt protagonist that no one likes no one on either side is into this human being i think there are female writers and we see this in a lot in in movies too uh, that female writers they're they're kind of like trying to live vicariously through these characters and they think that a that a strong female character cannot be strong in feminine ways uh, but that they have to be strong in, in masculine ways. They have to be like men to be considered like serious or leading characters. But it's it doesn't really That's translate because most women are not like that. Because think of the strong women in your life, your mom, your grandma. Are they girl bosses? No, it's grandma makes a mean sauce. She does the seven yeah. dishes at Christmas. Like she's yeah. they're nurturing. They're there for you. They listen. They fucking French, but they're not they're not being like who gives two shits you know what i mean they're not like right. tough and they don't come out of the gate swinging like if you a strong empowered intelligent woman if you fuck with her or her job or her kids then the lion comes out right. but for the most part they're like hey how's it going these new cunts they come out of the gate Cunty swinging but i think no that's reason. a good theory i think it's like fat ugly lesbians um who 
sort of watch society from afar and they're like, ooh, if I was if I was part of that mission to go and get aliens, I wouldn't take anyone's shit. And I'd make it real clear right out of the fucking gate that I don't take <laughs> shit from nobody. And they make it's this, like and, who they think they need to be. To, yeah. The and version of them that would have succeeded or done better in society. And it's like, no. And it's, it's often like, a pretty the actress is usually a pretty girl. So you have this pretty girl with this fat lesbian cunt personality. And you're like, that's not been my experience. Yeah. I think it's like a fantasy. They're not like basing their writing off true experiences. They're just. It's like, what oh, they think they need to be powerful and make moves and, and be more, uh, have more an effect on people. When really it's like the way to do that is to embrace your own nature and, and be yeah. the best you can be. Well, the writers don't look like the people. Like, there's another one, the Fantastical Negroes. Oh yeah, it's a magical society. And it's it's like a Harry Potter, but black, but also super woke. And the protagonist is this mulatto guy, and he says at the beginning of the trailer. Obviously, I haven't seen the movie. He goes, "Yeah, I uh, I get kind of nervous around white people." And you're like, "You're mulatto, <laughs> dude." And the odds of you raised by your black dad and not your white mom are zero. <laughs> Yeah. So I, I look him up, and his mom is this white German who has like fake dreads and stuff. And I don't think dad was around, and she worships the ground he walks on. And you're like, the script doesn't fit the guy because physiognomy is real. So when we see someone's face, we're like, yeah, I know guys like that. Yeah. Or even with mulattoes, you don't have to get into physiognomy, it's the skin tone. Clearly, this guy's been around white people. Like fucking Jordan Peele, get Mr. Get Out. He goes, yeah, yo. I, I can't really see myself writing a movie, a script with white people in it. And you're like, dude, you grew up in Manhattan with your white mom. Your black dad was not around. His cousins to- are white. Like, literally, he, he was to- at my my friend Jesse's wedding. I was a bridesmaid. He was there in 2009. I met him. There. Basically, everybody in that wedding was white except for Jordan Peele. It's like, he's around white people. Yeah, I'm sure you're real scared of them. He went to one of these Manhattan art schools where... The, like the kind the Beastie Boys went to, and there's like a garden on the roof, and they raise chinchillas, and they'll have like salmon that they, you know, raise from eggs to birth, and then they fucking eat them or some shit. Like, you're not exactly a hood oh rat. Bro. Yeah. No. And there's been, you've been dealing with white people your whole time in showbiz, improv, like his whole career working with white people. He talks so. very white, so that doesn't surprise me. He's like, <laughs> His jokes are white. Like, Cat Williams, black comedy is very particular. Cat Williams, you know, uh, who's the guy with the googly eyes who died? Uh, one of the Cedric the Entertainer type of guys. <laughs> what the fuck? You know, the guy with the googly <laughs> eyes. Oh, God, what's his name? He Something had his own like show. That. He was really funny. But mm-hmm. but uh, he was very black. And Jordan mm-hmm. Peele doesn't. Jordan Peele is no. like. White we nerd, fine. Mr. Yeah. Show, Bob Odenkirk kind of funny guy. Prep school, yeah. It's, and I don't care, but it's just like, stop being so phony. We can see through it all. Oh, Bernie Mac, yes. Bernie Mac, yeah, yeah, that's it. I never <laughs> heard of him. And that's very funny, but it's just like, if it's not you, it's not you. You don't have to, you don't have to black yourself up. Uh, Wait, but Kevin Hart, is he like a black comedian or is he like very white? I feel like he's for the kids. I'd say he's a black dude. Okay. You know, he made he cut his chops talking about how weird it is to see your uncle get beaten up right in front of you, and that's not a white thing. <laughs> <laughs> he's just kind of cheesy. I mean, I don't know. The little snippets I've seen of him are very cheesy and like. Dude, I heard from some insiders that he makes a hundred million dollars a year. Like we live what? in a great oh. society. And Jay Z wow. was complaining at the Grammys on Sunday at how Beyonce didn't get Best Album, and you're like, right. Dude, you and your you and your mediocre wife are worth three billion dollars. You're a crack dealer who yeah, shot his you're sister. Doing fine. You have the most expensive home in the history of Los Angeles, and you're wow. like, yo, what the fuck? Can a nigga get a break over here? <laughs> uh, yeah, and it's like, look, you your sister in law attacked you in an elevator. Uh, other than that, you're doing great. Look at Snoop Dogg. Like, he's another murderer. 
piece of shit garbage. We, we white people get canceled for because their dad said the n word. Snoop Dogg is a murderer, and if you turn on the TV right now, he's advertising soap, Corona, fucking outdoor fireplaces, everything. Mm-hmm. He is. He advertises everything. Maybe Alec Baldwin. Maybe Alec Baldwin will be our Snoop, like the Snoop of the whites, because he <laughs> killed somebody, and he's. Yeah. He's not gonna I hope so. go away for it. Well, that's Same when thing. that was his name, what George. <laughs> George Santos, that lying guy, who who said he was Jewish and he uh, he faked his education and he he was embezzling money. And he's I guess he's Hispanic and gay, but I'll take him. And when he was getting caught with all this corruption, I was like, good. Finally, we have a guy. I want mm-hmm. us to have mm-hmm. some corrupt cocksuckers. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, also, um, I'm not sure if it happened while he was Caitlyn or while he was Bruce, but, like, Bruce Jenner fucking hit somebody with his car. I think it was, like, three months before he was Caitlyn. Yeah, it was, like, at the exact same time. He's like, like, you're going to transition. What do you want to get out of the way before your new life? Like, what do you want to do? Well, I think they were like, Bruce, you're fucked. You're going to jail. Like, that's murder. And he was like, yeah, Bruce is fucked. (laughs) <laughs> is gone. Oh my god, imagine if that just inspired the whole transition. Wow. That's what I thought, honestly, but maybe not. I mean, at the end of the day, it's just growing your hair long. I don't think right. he cut his dick off, although Kanye told me he did cut his dick off, but there's no evidence of that. How would Kanye it. know? Kanye he said like, he called him and asked him. <laughs> <laughs> That's so interesting. <laughs> That would be my Wait, first when's question. When's the last time too. you talked to Kanye? What? You talked to Kanye? When's the last I time I met you him talked? once? That was only in oh, okay. We spoke. They, he interviewed day. him. But I got a, I got a, about a year of conversation out of it. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's amazing. I hope. That's I awesome. hope he's doing okay. It just seems, it just seems like he, the next girl he dated, looks exactly like Kim Kardashian, and. Uh, I wish she grow just, her hair out. I hate short. I know. Bald yeah. looks bad on almost no one if I mean, you're fucking good. her from behind and she's not super curvy you're looking down at a 12 year old boy uh, so but you she is super me. curvy yeah but still there's nothing to like grab I mean I guess the hips but like the hair is fun to pull on it know? looks weird it yeah, looks you, weird you need hair the little shoulders and the, the this hairdo yeah, no, you need hair. Um, Adam, thank you for the super check. Did you hear Owen Benjamin is being sued by his documentarian, Time to Spill the Beans? <coughs> yeah, I was joking. Um, I did not hear about this. Wait, who's getting sued? Ben- Owen Benjamin? Oops, no, that's a bad layout. Let's do this. Uh, I have not, I have not I can adjust this. my picture, by the way, if you want to go more vert. <laughs> no, it's okay. Uh, who's suing him? Uh, t- Owen Benjamin's documentarian is suing him. Whatever that means. I don't know. I don't know about that. Okay, that's know. juicy gossip. A little you gotta juicy. Unleash that. I don't know. Um, that's- okay, this super chat. Please take this with a grain of salt, Violet, because this is from one of my uh, autistic super fans, uh, Michael Gavinelli. Hi, Violet. I wanted to meet you in person. How was AVN last month? Did you ever thought jump into adult films on camera? Thought jump into adult films? Thought, thought, yeah, you never did a thought jump? <laughs> <laughs> what is that? <laughs> what, like, what does that mean? I don't know. I don't know. Like, it's when it's really late at night and you're having weird sort of daydreams just as you're falling asleep. It's a thought jump. Imagine, what if I did porn? Like, on yeah. movies. It's a thought oh. jump. Oh, I've thought about it. Never say never. It could happen one day. Maybe this guy is so dumb that that's how he writes, think of jumping. No, that's also how he talks on the phone when he calls into my Aww. show. Like, he What's called in on Monday. <laughs> What's his ethnicity? He's white. He's just oh. uh, white with a closet full of porn, a literal linen closet full of porn. He called the show on Monday. He said, Chrissy, how many months along pregnant are you? And I and I just knew right away that there was something else. I was like, you don't care how many months along I am. And I was like, I was like, what's this about, Michael? And he said, did your tits get bigger? And then, sure enough, the real question. I'm like, oh god. And I'm like, 
Wait, Maybe. do your nipples get bigger too? Um, <laughs> like when you're pregnant? That's classified. Oh, okay. I just thought <laughs> maybe. <laughs> I really want to know. You know what the trip? I can tell you uh, later. <laughs> there, when you uh, are pregnant, this dark line develops that goes from your belly button up, the center of your chest, and then it, it sort of spreads out, and it goes up to each nipple like a Y. I can't remember if it's a Y. I or don't a have T. that. You'll Maybe get it's it. It's a Google it's, map. It is. It's for That's the baby cool. to follow, to find the nips. It's like a cave thing. Your body literally turns Aww. into a Google map. Your baby's Your like, where can I eat around here? Map. And it's like, just follow the map. Yeah. You know what else is weird? When my wife was pregnant with our first uh, kid, a girl, she was like, I need a grapefruit. And I was like, okay. And then I, she called me on my way to the deli. She's like, no, I need like 12. I go, Okay. So I spent a fortune on grapefruits because you know how those bodegas will ream you for last minute shopping. And yep. uh, she ate them all, all 12 grapefruits. Citrus? And then we, was wow. she having a boy or a girl? She was having a girl, but she was at the stage of the pregnancy where the brain is being formed. And apparently that process that needs a lot of citric acid. So wow. her, her body was like, hey, we're making the brain. I'm going to need some grapefruits. That's cool. That is so cool. Because for me, I got to a point where like the little oranges tasted really good to me, but I wouldn't mm. send anybody out for them. I just was like, wow, these are tasty all of a sudden. Wow. Did you know that the, like Whole all factory. these women cutting their tits off, these, these fucking lesbians getting top surgery. Um, the, when the baby's breastfeeding, it, there's a whole lab there. Like it, when we see women cut their tits off, we're, it's just, we're just like, oh man, why'd you cut off your stupid earlobes that are just cool to look at? No, it's a lab. And when the baby's breastfeeding, it it the nipple goes. Wait a minute, this kid has like zero zinc, so the breasts mm. then produce more zinc or whatever she's low on, whatever the baby's low on, Aww. and then that comes out through the fucking tits. Whoa. So they evaluate. They evaluate. So you're the like baby. a GNC. Yes. <laughs> the, the tits are evaluating the kid's chemical composition, and then countering it so like say the baby That's was too high on coke insane and it, was, it was tripping out it, the 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 tits would give it like some some xanax to to take the edge off the buzz what? That's, That's wild but don't See, give your baby coke te- don't test no. that theory no God, no <laughs> if your baby's high on heroin the tits release narcan <laughs> oh wow yeah. So it's all good. Like you can, <laughs> you can get high while you're pregnant. It's fine. You can drink. Like what happens if you drink wine? What do they need if you drink wine while you're pregnant? You're only. You can. I've read that you can have like a glass a night when you're in your like third trimester. But it's like the well, they say you can even do it breastfeeding as long as you pump and dump. Really? Mm-hmm. Not even worth it for me. I would just get a huge glass of wine and lose track. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I would just be like, this is my glass. Here we go. (laughs) (laughs) Like if the baby food is bland, do salt and pepper come out of your boobs? Like, oh, they just know what you need. If if a black nanny is breastfeeding a white kid, like, you know, these, uh, what do they call them? Wet nurses? A wet nurse. The the black wet nurse will give way too much flavor and (laughs) and spice to the white baby. And the white baby will be like... (laughs) <laughs> his nose and she's like oh shit sorry I gotta change my settings <laughs> <laughs> the baby just has a lifelong fried chicken craving doesn't know where it came from <laughs> my kid was reading this book uh, this graphic novel and it's it's called New Kid it's written by a, it's a cartoon by a black guy and uh, at one point there's a scene I said to my son I go is it woke and he goes ah there's one scene that's kind of weird and I go show me and this kid, it's a white kid eating at a black family's house, and he tries one bite of their food, and his eyes turn into bulging hearts. And then the next oh, wow. panel, the kid is on the plate, and he's hugging the, the white kid is hugging the food on the plate. And he goes, "What is this? It's the most delicious thing I've had in my life." And then the black dad at the table goes, "Uh, it's called flavor." <laughs> oh God, that's cool that your kids know like. You can ask them, is this woke? And they could tell you. Yeah, I trained the youngest one, not the others, though. But here's the thing about that that's annoying. I saw some chick who does cooking videos on TikTok explain this. She goes, yes, I don't put seasoning on my food 
because it's in the food. Like you don't see me putting garlic powder on my I chicken because I chopped up garlic and put garlic in there. I'm not putting like hot chili pepper spices because there's chili peppers in there already cut up. I don't need the powdered version. The real version is in there. That makes sense. Yeah. Like, you know, cooking. Yeah. So <laughs> the whole, like, we don't season is a myth. Sorry, go ahead. I thought yeah. she was saying that the, she did have, like, the powder was the same thing. Like, it didn't yes. really matter. That's yeah, what I okay. meant to say, yeah. She goes, yes, I didn't include garlic powder because I have garlic. Yeah, Okay. Like why do I'm the I'm triggered by first? that too. I'm triggered by the whole like white people don't season their food or cook it. Like all right, some don't, I don't mind criticisms do. that are accurate. Like it is true that when white people walk by each other, we go the acknowledgement. Yeah. yeah. I've tried to not do it and I cannot help it. I cannot not go or like, when I walk by it. another white person. Morning. I am so that person, like when I'm hiking, I'm like hi. Hi. You have to do the hiking high. There's a there's yeah. a TikTok about that. I'm so that person. I'm like, I'm sorry. Why am I doing this? But I have to just acknowledge you as you walk by. It's just we're here. You know? we're in we nature. live in a society. Yeah, Beautiful of day. course. Beautiful day. <laughs> or dancing, biting the top, the bottom lip while dancing. That's really hard to not do. So oh, I noticed you do that at the strip club. Like every time I throw it some dollars, <laughs> I go. <laughs> like I can't even help it, and I was like, "Why do I bite my under lip every time?" It's like a, a weird tick, but yeah. <laughs> so make fun of us for that. That's true. But uh, yeah, <laughs> the spicy food, the flavor food—that's fucking annoying. Yeah. Honestly, is. like salt is like the best thing. Garlic salt and salt—it's like the best thing you put. Yeah, that's the only seasoning <laughs> you should do. Any other powder you put on is a crutch. Because you mm -hmm. didn't have the right ingredients, is my mm -hmm. yes. Issue. It's a cope. All right, I um, want to watch police videos of people. All right, go watch police. <laughs> Gavin, what's coming up on Censored TV? Any fun guests? Any fun things yeah. going on? Tomorrow we got Anthony Cumia. We're gonna try mm -hmm. remote. It's not the same kind of vibe. I hope we can figure it out. It's it's weird when you have that kind of rapport and then you're remote. You know. I know. I hope you guys can work it out still. I will be flying out in the morning so I can make the show. So you'll uh -huh. be having me. Don't don't worry. I'll be there. I know. <laughs> you really want me. <laughs> okay, that's fantastic. But we I just said we will not be in the studio. That's the problem. Oh, well, what about for Thursday? Are you are y'all gonna be there on Thursday for yeah. the cop show? Come on down. Thursday okay. Thursday we're there. We're going through police videos. We have a ton. Uh, of just females. It's funny. So much of this is women being arrested, losing their fucking minds, and female cops being total, totally unable to deal with perps. Like, women shouldn't be criminals, and they shouldn't women be cops. Women should not be cops, unless you can only do lady crimes or midget crimes. Like, if they can ensure that you only handle women, <laughs> children, midgets, like, maybe. But no grown men crimes. Yeah. I love watching the women freak out when they're getting arrested, though. I'm like, you're well, so... I had an idea. I actually stole the idea from a viewer, but we're going to make... I think we should make bingo cards because I didn't do nothing is in every single video. Oh. Why am I being arrested for is in like every Like a drinking game. I got to call my... I got to call my mom. But I, oh, I, yeah. I need my phone is another one. Uh, Repeating themselves. Oh yeah, the times. loop talk. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a big. I feel one. like they say like like when they tell them to get out of the car or something. They're like I'm about to, I'm about to. They say that a lot, right? Yeah, and then <laughs> with the drunk girls, the, the the I don't know how you put this on a bingo card, but like the being super slutty to fuck you, I'll kill your <laughs> entire family, and then to cry, I don't know what's happening, and then to like I'm fine, I'm better. Wow, well, like, it's they're just it's trying like everything. A dial personality dial and they're just like chick, 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 chick. oh yeah um i can't breathe is a good one. Oh, that's oh, a yeah. good one. yeah thanks for a lot me. of people can't breathe all of a sudden really... i saw one they put a spit mask on him which is just thin mesh and he's like i can't breathe i can't breathe uh it's not a plastic bag dude yeah it's a laundry <laughs> bag you're fine you're good oh my gosh well that's great i will uh i will connect you too i'll make sure you 
you, you guys each have each other's contact info. Um, Violet, where can people find you? You can find me on Instagram, Twitter. Oh, wait, Instagram, OnlyFans, or TikTok at Violet Brandani. Twitter is L I L Violet, Lil Violet. And yeah. I am Ooh. so like, thank you so much, Gavin, for coming on. This was such a little treat for me. I'm, I'm blushing. All it was this a whole thing for me because I spent so much on your OnlyFans. It was great to get this for free. <laughs> Do you want me to give you a little? <laughs> We're on YouTube. <laughs> we'll save that for censored.tv or compound. Okay. Um, thank wait. you to everybody in the <laughs> chat. <laughs> thank you to everybody in the chat for questions and comments. Yeah. And we will see you guys next time.